Have you ever had tons of auto hockey scripts open and couldn't tell them apart? What if I told you all your scripts could have images? Yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's get right to it. You're first going to want a, a square image for your script. If you're hardcore like me, you might want to make your own. But you can also download a, one from a website like flaticon.com. I think I want a frog. I don't know why. All right. When you find the one you want, just go ahead and download it. So once you have whatever image you're going to use, you're going to want it to convert it to the Windows 3.1 compatible .ico file format. This is so old, most image editors can't even save this format. So we're going to need to convert our PNG or JPEG file into the ICO format. Uh, I like to use cloudconvert.com. We can drag our frog icon right into Cloud Convert, and it's going to upload it automatically. And then from the dropdown, we can just select ICO. Then all you have to do is hit Start Conversion, and wait a second. Remember that Auto Hotkey is very tied into the Windows set of APIs, so it's going to need that ICO format to display the icon throughout the system. All right, it's about done. Let's get it. So I've added the icon file to my folder, and I'm going to create an auto hockey script in the same folder. I'm going to call it icontest.ahk. It's a reasonable name. And let's add it into VS Code. There's only one command that we need to add the icon, and that's the menu command. So we go menu, tray, icon, and then the name of our file, which in this case is frog facing right.ico. And we're already done. So we'll just say if you have some script, put our script here. Note that the menu command was not placed inside a hotkey. So it gets run at the start of the script. So let's go ahead and run it. It's kind of hard to see, but there's the frog. If that's all you came here for, thanks for watching. But I do have another trick though. As I mentioned earlier, you can use the same command to change the icon at any time in your script. Let's say you have a script that gets toggled maybe in an on or off state. And while you're toggling that, we can update the icon to change as it goes on or off. Let's update our script. First, I'm going to copy in two files I converted earlier, just a red and a green circle. Again, these images can be anything you want. The first thing I'm going to do is make a new variable called state. And maybe somewhere in your script, you would have some kind of trick. Right, we're just going to say it'll be on or off. And then since it's defaulting to off, I'm going to make our icon be the red circle, indicating that it's off. And now in our hotkey, we're going to do a little toggle. So if state is off, state becomes on. Else, if state is on, state becomes off. So every time you run F12, it's just going to flip state between on, off, on, off, on, off. So now let's add in our icon command. So I'm just going to copy this in to both of these. And then when the state becomes on, we want it to be the green circle. And then when state is, when the state becomes off, we want it to be the red circle. Well, that's already it. Let's go ahead and run it. So you can see it loaded up as the red circle. And as I press F12, it changes from red to green and back again. I hope you can see how this is useful. It is some extra effort to make the images, but when you start loading up dozens of scripts at once, it's really easy to lose track between them. And believe it or not, it really makes me happy every time I see a long line of custom icons that I've made. If you've liked this video and you want to see more automation scripts and tutorials, check out my other videos. See ya!